Hey guys, uh, welcome to this new tutorial in Grasshopper. Um, today we're going to look a little bit about um, Voronoi calculations and um, some color gradients and how that works, right? Um, so let's start by just uh, creating a series of points. So I'm going to create one and make copies of them, just like just to create a point cloud as dense as you want, right? Like if you want to do it faster, you can pick several points and so so something like that right um, so we're gonna bring these points so PT uh, multiple points and we're gonna just select all of those and we have that right so if you just go into mesh uh, and then you find Voronoi uh, egg triangulation or Voronoi diagram here you'll see that we can just bring this Voronoi diagram into the screen and we can connect the points like that and we get our Voronoi diagram, right? So this is using a boundary that it's kind of not specified that could be determined here. Uh, a box, so it has to be some uh, a box. Um, and we have also kind of some options, but let's just work with this for now. Um, so that's good. Let's type box just to determine a box and we can do just uh, a box like this and then when we right click set one box it will ask us to give a corners of this box so we could just basically draw it like that so maybe here we're gonna give a height um, like that and then we're gonna just turn off the preview right but we can just uh, connect that and we have this kind of Voronoi calculation uh, we could also get rid of the grid by typing grid and then show grid, yes. Uh, there we go. Um, so we have our Voronoi diagram. And what is the Voronoi diagram giving us? Um, let's look at the parameters. And you see that it's giving us a series of polylines, right? Um, so if we would like to, um, for instance, um, I don't know, let's say we want to just um, get each one of these individual cells to be extruded at different distance, right? We could do something like area. Uh, so we get the area of each one of these nodes. I'm going to turn off preview just not to see the extra points that are the centroids. And then we could extrude these curves, right? Um, so this is the geometry that we want to extrude and the amount it's going to be in set, right? Uh, and that's the distance, so you see that we're extruding everything. I'm also going to cap holes. Right, so if I turn off preview, you see that we're kind of extruding everything at a similar distance, but if we connect the area now, we basically get a giant extrusion, like at different heights, right? And that's maybe not what we want, right? Like, it seems definitely kind of way too much. So let's do a little bit of, uh, I don't think we've talked about math uh, functions, so let's talk a little bit about that and how functions allows us to kind of, I mean you could do the math uh, with operators here and, and do a giant network out of math, but when you kind of start getting into the math functions, and I'm using the last version of Grasshopper, so it, this is a bit different from the previous ones. Um, so we'll see what this node does, right? So you see that's the function node. And if I double click on this one, I can just write an expression, right? Something like um, x divided by 100, right? And x doesn't mean anything right now. It's just, this is an expression, right? So x doesn't exist, but if we connect the area to x, right? right? Basically, whatever the area is, it's gonna be divided by 100. And then we can use that as the height and you can see that we're scaling everything down um, quite a bit like divided by 100 and this starts to get kind of a bit more interesting right um, so we have this kind of diagram of heights but what if we want to do it the other way around I mean what if we want these like smaller cells um, to be high right we could just say something like a uh, 1 divided by x, right? So the math of that will give us that um, well, it's going to be a very small value, so we could just say times 100. Uh, 
and I think we should start getting something. Let's do 10 divided by x by 100, and there we go. So we're starting to get a little bit of, you know, the smaller cells start kind of getting pumped. Um, but because we do have a second value here, y, we could use this to say times y, right? And this will actually break the network for a second. And uh, let's put a slider, knowing that this value should go from zero to maybe 500, right? So in this way, y now we multiply it by 2.5, and we could just determine the height, something like that, right? So now we have this Voronoi diagram. Um, and we are kind of extruding the faces um, based on their area up, right? Um, so that's what we're getting there. Right? Um, so that's fine. Um, that's a way of just like visualizing these uh, areas and the Voronoi diagram um, and, and what it means. In a way, the Voronoi diagram is going to do continuous cells um, for each one of these points. Um, calculating the, the kind of the midpoint between, the, the, let's say this is kind of the line that is just halfway through this point and this point and then intersect that with the l half line between say this point and this point and then it's going to trim them like that and the same for every cell so in a way it's a calculation that you could try to like if you wiki it you will be able to do it kind of mathematical mathematically um, or even like in a paper just like trying to do understand it but in a way it's very, very intuitive how to kind of you get this kind of line is perpendicular to the line between these two and so forth like this calculation gets this kind of um, always uh, a fully packed uh, uh, cells right so let's look at instead of doing that uh, I'm actually I'm going to turn on back my Voronoi diagram. Um, I'm going to see something like, I want to just use something like the color gradient, right? So the gradient. And, and this gradient, we could change the preset colors, so we could just work with something a bit uh, uh, nicer. Let's say this green seems good. Um, so this color gradient, uh, in a way, is uh, has a lower domain and an upper domain and the values that you're going to be giving in, right? So basically you want to determine which is going to be the lower domain and the upper domain, right? So how do we do that? We will just first start by sorting the list of areas, right? Because we want to use the area to, to color the, the elements, right? So this is the, um, the list that you want to work with. And now this list is going to be sorted, right? So it's going to be going from the smaller to the bigger one, right? So that's going to be the the first one is going to be the lower domain and the last one is going to be the upper domain. So we could get item, list item. So this item is going to be by default, it comes with zero. So that's definitely the first one. That's fine, right? We need to get the last one, right? And now, um, what is the last element of this list now? We could say list length. Uh, so list length here, this list, the length of it, that should be the last element, but we actually need to, that's basically one element too big, right? So we need to subtract one. So we're going to do subtraction, and, and I'm going to just, because I don't want this to be a slider, I'm going to just put one. So subtract one to that, and that's the last element. So we check that we have the last element in the list and the first one. So this is the smallest value and this is the biggest value, right? So we could use this as the upper domain of the of our gradient, right? So now we have um, the lower domain and the upper domain, right? And that's working for the gradient, but now we need to determine what are we going to just paint, right? What are we going to just change its color, right? So what we want to do is um, we use uh, we want to use the areas that are sorted like these areas uh, yes these are the areas that we want right um, so we want to just send the areas in uh, and those areas are going to get a, a color assigned to them based on the 
on the criteria, right? Um, I mean, you could have used in the normal areas, uh, but so let's try it with the normal areas, these areas, right? Uh, that are not sorted. Um, so we could actually now use the preview, custom preview, to just uh, use this as a shader, right? And we are going to do a planar surface of the Voronoi cells, right? So the Voronoi cells, we do that and we get um, surfaces and these guys, we use them as geometry and you see that we get a color gradient. So um, now basically um, we can actually play with this um, coloration and you see that we have, uh, we can influence a large amount um, or make it let's say this part narrower um, and basically work with the coloration of these cells and, and in a way just use this to kind of represent or make diagrams of, uh, of density like Voronoi in a way it's, 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 it's a diagram of density right like when you have closer points together in a way it's actually showing you that um, this area it's more dense and it has kind of uh, more information that areas that are kind of like larger areas like this right so interesting way of just starting to deal with the gradient you need to kind of understand the lower and upper domain of whatever data you're working with in this case the areas and then you are um, you putting in the data of the areas uh, and using that information to color the geometry of these surfaces right um, so yeah we can just change the, some of the presets uh, and you can see how this diagram really kind of changes, right? Um, in this case, because our cells are so little, like you see that most of the cells are quite big, uh, and in a way it feels that we would like to just kind of bring a little bit, of maybe something like that. You can always go in and add a new value. It might not be the most beautiful value, but uh, you can go in and do something like that uh, and you see that you're kind of starting to affect the the colors and, 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 and create your own custom gradient right so that's kind of um, the way of doing that um, if you're interested in baking this color um, I would really recommend just to go to um, Julio Placitino's uh, website and he has some tools to actually bake in color from these um, gradients um, so that would be the way to go I think uh, if you have any other ideas or any other solutions for that um, just let me know because that's the way I've been kind of handling it and thanks to Julio again for for the tools and his website as well um, so yeah that's it for this tutorial and I hope to see you guys soon